Welcome to Multiple Nerdgasm with your hosts, Matt, Luke, and Dan. Multiple Nerdgasm, your guide to all things nerdy. I can see smoke in my house. Mm. Damn. Like, it, there is a haze in this room right now. It is that bad so in Canberra snap, at the moment. Your snap was pretty bad. Yeah. And we're not really close to fires. Well, I read online that Canberra, Canberra is now the most populated city on Earth right populated? now. Populated? Oh, fuck. Did what? I do it again? Yeah. Polluted. 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 Oh, Christ. There's fuck <laughs> all people with, there. Trust polluted me. with humans. But that, that does sort of- that I find a bit crazy, like because it's really bad here. So, but we've had to overtake someone. That means that this is someone's normal. Yeah, yeah Bangladesh are like fuck you, Canberra. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of polluted, actually, though, uh, you just reminded me of something. This is a a website for the Patuxent River Authority, right? So there's a, mm-hmm. there's a river, uh, in, okay, in Rhode Island. This is this is on their website, right? I'm just is reading the- this. Is that the fictitious website. river from Family Guy? They do talk about Pawtucket in Family Guy, and it's not fictitious. It's real. It's a there place you go. <laughs> in Rhode Island. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is from the uh, Pawtucket River Authority website. Right? I'm reading this verbatim. The Pawtucket River is no longer Rhode Island's dirtiest river or, in quotes, the sewer of the Pawtucket Valley. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Why would you put that on the fucking website? Yeah, who's calling it that? Okay, but it just means that another river's now the dirtiest one there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but also, <laughs> but don't, don't, don't say, oh, my house is no longer the filthiest house on the street. I just don't yeah. mention it. <laughs> yeah. And especially quoting what people used to call it. Like, yeah. my house is no longer this- the shithole of Smith Street. <laughs> like- <laughs> I could understand if they were saying you like we've got like ours are like, like the whole state is quite good now, but not just one part of it. Also, yeah. it's not that big a state. How many big rivers? How many big polluted rivers do you have? <laughs> I, I mean, more than one. It, yeah, even if people two. did used to call your river the sewer <laughs> of the Patuxent Valley, <laughs> leave it off the website. I yeah, I would just be let, just, because I mean, how many people call it that, right? How many people are yeah. going down there like, oh, like even if you have sewer to say, like, tucks it. The first part, it still makes me laugh. The Patuxent River is no longer Rhode Island's dirtiest river. All right, fine. Mm-hmm. But don't put the sewer of the Patuxent Valley quote in. No. No. Yeah, you can maybe Unless- just go look, we've cleaned up, we're a lot better, but you don't have to get the sewer part. Matt, I just want to ask about some punctuation. Is the word dirtiest in quotes and is there a winky face after it? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So you, now your your city is the, the sewer of uh, Australia. Is that what you're telling us, Luke? Mm. No, no, no. It's, it's the a, sewer think, of the world. I think it's the ashtray of, so of the world the right now. <laughs> yeah, it's the ashtray of the world. Yeah. Yeah, because I looked at a map. Because, and, uh, or the late 90s goth club of the world. Because they used to have <laughs> those pretty full of smoke, if I do recall. Club Blink. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I wasn't going to name names, there. but sure. <laughs> Well, I actually remember when you used to be able to smoke in there as well. Yeah. Plus, the smoke <laughs> it was machine. encouraged. Yeah, man, <laughs> that place was filthy, and, it was, and we loved it. A winky face. <laughs> yep, <laughs> it was Blade Runner, and we were very drunk. Um, very drunk. Of Blade Runner. Bit of follow up. Mm. Played a little bit more of Blade Runner nineteen ninety seven. Luke, you are correct. I do get. I told you trouble for looking at a girl's bum as she wiggles yep. off. Oh yeah, um, I played a bunch of it. And you were and, and you Matt, were looking at you it too, correct. weren't you? It's a fucking great. Well, you have to. The camera pans up. <laughs> um, it, I was going to look really away from the screen in shame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, flagellating myself. Yeah. Oh, geez. You know what it reminds me of, Matt? It, I mean, it, it's mm. it's the it's the classic adventure game kind of format, but it also reminds me of a bit of a proto L.A. noir. Oh yeah, sure. Just in like. Putting together clues and, and kind of formulating theories. Fuck, it's a, fuck, it's a good game. Because it doesn't give you, it doesn't really do you a lot of favors as far as, mm. you know, uh, go here, do this next. Like, I mean, your character doesn't accidentally just go off the rails and fucking verbally bash people like in LA Noir. <laughs> no, I think the first time I played it is because you can hint the entire game. 
<laughs> and it'll basically tell you what to do to get like the crappiest ending. And I think that's how I played it the first time. In LA <laughs> Noir or Blade no, Runner? No, no, no. Um, Blade Runner. You can get hints? I don't even know how to do that. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be, hmm. You're able to get hints that are basically, it'll, I think it flashed up blue on the screen, like where to click next. I once played an entire huh. game of um, computer chess by just using hints to see if the computer could beat itself. And? Could it? Still lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you? So you lost. So the computer was just helping itself win. <laughs> it knew, man. It knew. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, uh, I gotta look into this because I, I didn't read any manuals or anything. I just started playing the game, and I am. Don't look into it. Just enjoy. There it. have been times where I've been like, "The fuck am I supposed to do?" And it did. Man, seem I, there, there is I a hit, the there first is a hint King's button. Quest recently, and there's shit in that that is illogical. Illogical. <laughs> yeah, well, I haven't had like, to look no up. There's no way any human beings. Yet. Like I am mm. progressing. It's just that there've been a couple of times where I'm like, "Why? Yeah, you know, how was I supposed yeah, to know?" A few that? times where I just get like into a never-ending loop in that game, where it's just hmm. sort of, I go here and I go, I, I just couldn't work out, and then you just hit the hint button, and then I start to rely on hint far too much. Hint button. There's a hint button. I swear there is. Okay. All right, I'm gonna look it up. I oh, know because then I'll then I'll use it. Yeah, don't. Yeah, no, I'm torn. Just forget it. Forget but it. But you know what's you know what's there now. So yeah, but it's not been exposed to me as such. Life has. I'll expose it to you. Mm. Mm. Yes, good game. Very good game. I should buy it. Is it still on sale? Probably. I probably missed out. Yeah, let me see. I'll put it on my wish list. Bucks. Worth it. I don't buy I mean, games. Look, full they couldn't price. charge. Mate, it's nine ninety nine. Get it. Pick it up. <laughs> no, it's fifteen bucks. <laughs> what? Wish list. That'll teach it. Yep. Man, the Aussie dollar sucks right now. If it it's really bucks does. For you. Wait, I think it's the same, isn't it? Let me look. How much is it here? This Disco Elysium game looks good. Oh, no, you're right. It's 10 Which bucks one? here. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Disco Elysium. Uh, what, what's $10 on sale? It looks good. Elysium. Uh, Disco Elysium, yeah. It's like a role playing game where you're a detective. Uh, and I think you don't even have to fight. You can kind of do anything like uh, unprecedented freedom of choice, intimate, sweet talk, resort to violence, write poetry, sing karaoke, dance like a beast or solve the meaning of life. Mate, that's this is literally a game about David Rule, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Just go through that list again. Just go through Mate, it one more time for me. He's getting a lot of mentions on this show lately. <laughs> he has. Just saying. You know. Just saying. Yeah. Just, just saying. To be fair, I don't know that he's ever done karaoke. Oh, he must have. I'm. He must no, have. he's done karaoke. Yeah, he, he must have. Yeah. I'll say this though, Matt. I'm, I'm looking up Elysium Disco right now and it looks fucking great. Yeah. I, I do like the idea or of is it? this just. No, no, it's a new game, I think. It's on uh, huh. Xbox. Yeah. I think the, the GOG version is Windows only, like the PC version is Windows only. So you might have to get it on the Xbox. This isn't on play, Xbox, but- is it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. No. Game doesn't get released on there without me knowing. <laughs> I think you clear this with me. Uh, oh, go, oh there it is for Xbox One, Microsoft oh. Windows. It's coming out in 2020, so that's why I didn't know about it yet. Yeah. Oh, okay, there you go. Uh, it is 2020 now, though. Yeah, so it's out. True, I guess. Um, I don't want to just jump all over the place, but there's something that is also coming out in the 2020s, according to um, futurists. Uh, <laughs> that you know is a, a little bit of a little bit of follow up. To you know, mm. things that we've touched upon in the past, uh, Matt, you got you got the sex toy news jingle handy. <laughs> oh, let me check. Uh, I I don't have it handy, <laughs> but it's been there. played right now. Yeah. Well, what do you do when you need a new toy to put inside of you? You listen to sex toy news. Sex toy news. <sighs> And there it was. So technologists uh, agree that by 2025, now that's not very far away, mm, sex no. robots will be indistinguishable from humans. <laughs> Bullshit. And they go as far as saying that you'll be able to get partially through a conversation with one uh, before you even realise that, uh, that you're talking <laughs> to a robot get, and not- <laughs> Before you get as bored as you normally would. <laughs> what talking to a woman? Sure. Specific women. Specific women, damn. Not all women. Okay. Not all women. Fine. No, fine. Whatever. <laughs> I like this. Okay. In the past decade, okay. dolls were even based on real people, including porn stars, 
and comedian Whitney Cummings. <laughs> it's very specific. <laughs> I know it is specific, but I must admit I looked up that clip because I didn't know who Whitney Cummings was. I don't think I do. No, I'm trying to work out who that is now. She's, as she's well. just, just an American stand up comedian, but she did one one particular uh, stand up show. I think it was on Netflix where she had a sex doll made of herself. And evidently, um, tons of people have been writing into sex robot fucking websites and being like, can you please make me a uh, Whitney I Cummings want, sex I want doll? one of those. Hmm. Yeah, well, just the mold's there, so. Uh, yes, but they actually, they, they don't have her lo- her likeness rights to just mass oh. manufacture. Sex robots will have vision and will also be able to recognise you in a crowded room. That is not what I want <laughs> from No. <laughs> I want it to pretend it's never met me. So if I'm what? buying a doll Dan, how's it to going? fucking it's me. hide under my bed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm that inanimate object you fuck at night. Okay, <laughs> settle down. My family are here. <laughs> you look at the bar and it walks in. Dan, 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 Dan. It's not, it's not mine. It's not mine. Dan. Yeah, Dan. it is. <laughs> Dan. Danny. Danny. <laughs> it's sort of defeating the point of having the sex doll. Yeah. <laughs> if it talks to you. <laughs> yeah, if it, if it, well, if it, if it wants to talk to me after. Yeah. <laughs> well, Matt already says he gets bored even talking to women, so. <laughs> <laughs> Memorise your personality. Hmm. The 2020, oh. Indistinguishable from humans. I love I this, know, though. I, I, I question that. Come on. AI yeah. may approach something in the mammal category um, with human-like intelligence. Well, we're just date a human being then. <laughs> Like, I mean, well, if you're literally only buying this to fuck it, why does it need intelligence at all? There's not a single photo of a sex robot in this article that would indicate to me that I will not be able to distinguish this from a human being. <laughs> no, like, no. I mean, they, I'm ha- also going on the talking because I, I haven't even <laughs> met a chatbot that I could have a conversation with yet. <laughs> that you know of. I'm constantly disappointed with <laughs> chatbots. Yeah, they just I always let ask me down. I always ask for introductions, but I'm never happy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, are you a chatbot? You have to tell me if you are. <laughs> you <should laughs> <be a> dick. <laughs> chatbots aren't allowed to show you their dicks. Well, I mean, apparently, I mean, everything I've read on this podcast leads me to believe sex robots are the future. Mm. So maybe mm. we'll just forget what humans look like. Maybe that's how this works. That's, ah. uh, yeah, that's great. Well, I'm also going the feel. Uh, like, are mm. they going to grow human skin and put oh, it over oh. it? Like, <laughs> Jesus. I hope not. Mate, I mean, we already talked last week about how in the first Terminator, the fucking human skin started to smell <laughs> after a couple of days. Yeah, James so. Cameron was almost right, but he was just- <laughs> That's not what- yeah. We're not building them to kill John Connor. We're building them to fuck. If John Connor wanted to fuck one- be my guest. <laughs> the Terminator. That'd be a different movie. Mm. Sit back and talk <laughs> fuck the leader of the resistance. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that movie already exists. Yeah. Yeah. Sky fishnet stockings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what the name of this podcast? It might be. Look, um, we mentioned futurists mm. and um, we've got a geek of the week this week. Unfortunately. Yeah. If Luke will allow it. Well, we'll see. I mean, did he commit mm. suicide? No. I think he was just an old man. Okay. Then Luke might yeah. let it through. Old people are allowed to die. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good to hear. Uh, Sid <laughs> Mead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, futurist and, uh, I guess, visual designer. Came up with the look of Blade Runner. So, basically designed what I thought the future was going to look like when I was yeah. a kid. Yours, that we have he also now, did Tron. Uh, he did do Tron. He did t- basically. Yeah. He was that guy that said the future of the eighties will just look like a cyberpunk eighties. Yeah, yeah, that, that was him. He died at uh, eighty six. So. I'm just looking at a few more of the movies that he's worked on, and I will allow it because okay, very good. rattle some off. Like Luke. He, he's, um, okay, so we heard Blade Runner, Tron, mm. Aliens. Yeah. Okay. Short Circuit. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I like Short Circuit back in the day. Oh, no, I don't know if I'd like it now. Yeah, let, yes. let's leave the past where it belongs. No disassemble. Uh, 2010. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Looking at a naked woman and saying, nice software. <laughs> <laughs> and then some other stuff that I don't really care about. But it started Wait, off strong. Go back. I want to know 
Sid means work that you literally just don't care enough to mention. Well, it's time cop. Uh, Elysium. He skipped, he skipped time cop. Johnny Mnemonic. Time, oh, Johnny Mnemonic's oh, a good price. Johnny Mnemonic Mission to Mars. would have been a lot more well received if it didn't come out just before The Matrix. I think it was the year before, right? Yeah, maybe. Round it's about. just too similar in a way. It, and Look, Mission well, to Mars Mission is to a Mars. good movie too, actually. He did that. It's on it's, the list it's, there. I like it, but I don't think it's a good movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think it's enjoyable, but I don't think it's a good movie. Honestly, that Does is that the most sense? generic title. I can't even remember what movie that is. Is that the one I, with um, I did have to Google Val Kilmer? No. I think isn't that the one where they've got the bugs? No. And they on Mars? The bugs. Well no not that there were these living organisms that they blew up to escape or something. I don't think so. You know what? I don't they, know they what escaped movie this them, is. they escaped there in a Russian ship thing. I, I might be thinking of a different movie. This Gary Sinise and Tim Robbins. I love it that there was yeah. a fucking a bunch of uh Hollywood execs who were high fiving themselves one afternoon about <laughs> fuck yeah we got Gary Sinise and Tim Robbins directed by Brian De Palma. Okay, yeah, yeah. I only have vague memories of this. He goes movie, from but quite good quite to good. stock standard. Uh, I remember being quite good. You know what? So I'd watch this. I would. I think I'm going to have to watch this. it because I'm thinking of a different movie. Yeah, I might not have seen this actually. There are a lot of movies that are very similar in title and poster to this. Like the poster really mm. doesn't yes. help that much. No, it really Let me doesn't. guess. It's a little bit red. <laughs> yeah. And it's mm-hmm. got like a sky beam and then maybe some I big also faces th- of astronauts. Am I right? And I also think it has the same font as a lot of other Mars movies as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's that? There's just a Mars font. Ghosts of Mars. Ghosts of Mars is the- oh, Ghosts Carpenter of one. Mars is a great movie. Yeah. Well, actually, again, I'm not sure if yeah. it is, but I definitely <laughs> enjoyed it. It is to you and that's all that matters. Exactly. Uh, there are quite a few movies that I enjoy that I don't think are good. Oh, me too. Yeah, that I that a little guilty pleasure that I, I like putting on and mm-hmm. watching while oh, I play. Absolutely. A game. And speaking of which, um, you know, I, I've said in the past I'm trying to work my way through the back catalogues of directors I like um, mm. for the films that I've missed along the way. This week I'm doing mm-hmm. Russell Mulcahy, the director of Highlander. So oh, yeah. if anyone knows me, you'll know that I fucking love Highlander. It's my favourite 80s movie. And, it's um, a great movie. Yeah. Great soundtrack. Love it. Love it. Um, directed by an Australian called Mo- Russell Mulcahy. And I couldn't name a single other film that he'd made. So I've decided to go back. So I've downloaded yeah, right. a bunch and uh, I'll let you know how legally. I go. Obtained legally, I think you meant to say. Obtained legally from, from yes. Italy. Yes. Italy. Yeah. Um, so, Luke, are you going to allow Sid Mead to be a uh, geek? I, I will. I will. Most recently, he He's worked a- on uh, Blade Runner 2049, which I think fucking qualifies oh, him good. alone. Because yeah, that movie was beautiful. Did he actually work on it? Or was it one of these things that, well, mm-hmm. we're just going to bring him in, sit him in a corner and he say he's helped out. So, fine. Yeah. Which fine. means we based some of the stuff in this movie off some <laughs> of the stuff he came up with for the last movie. All right. Yeah. Fine. If you don't mind- can I nominate another Geek of the Week? Or maybe if it's not Ooh. Geek of the Week, because um, Sid Mead is, uh, I was about to say Sid Haig, but thankfully he's, he's still alive. Um, <laughs> no, he's not. I think he died oh, shit. as well. He was, probably, he was probably Geek of the Week too, right? Uh, he died. Maybe. Does yeah. anyone else forget who September died? September 21st. I forget who's alive. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sid Haig yeah. definitely passed away this year. Last year, yeah, sorry. that's true, yeah. The Sids. Um, does anyone know who Neil Innes is? No. no. Okay. So n- if you're watching any of the Monty Python episodes or films and mm. all of the Pythons are on screen and there's an extra guy in the scene, chances are that's Neil Innes. <laughs> he also was the kind of band leader for the Monty Python songs. And in okay. non-Python but related films like The Ruttles, you guys seen The Ruttles? No. No. The Ruttles is a parody of The Beatles. It's a <laughs> mockumentary and it's fucking great. Oh, yeah. and, uh, and he's in that too and he wrote all the songs with Eric Idle and he died this week too. Mm. Um, oh. Natural Causes at 75. So he didn't quite get to um, Sid Mead mm. level, but I'd like to- I'd like to nominate him as Geek of the Day, let's say. Geek of the Day. 
All right. Yeah. Well, I, 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 yeah. You touched g- a lot of g- stuff g- that g- I enjoy. G- so I'll allow it. Because, mm. like Monty Python, my God, they have done some great stuff. But the other ninety percent of the stuff they've done is crap. It's so it's so true. <laughs> but there must be a name for this phenomenon. Everyone just forgets about the ninety percent shit, and everyone only remembers the three sketches they really like. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I hope I hope that thirty years from now, multiple nerdgasm is remembered in the same way as Monty Python. Like multiple nerdgasm, <laughs> fucking everything they did was funny. I remember these three episodes yeah. that were great. What about the yep. other hundreds of episodes? <laughs> I've forgotten because about yeah, like if you watch, especially their television show, mm. yeah. Oh my god, there was just a lot of stuff on there that's just well, I don't think it was even funny back then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, they got- They were sleeping with someone. All of them at once. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Is it? Is that- That's how you used to do is it. Is that why we're not doing it? We, are we doing that wrong? <laughs> oh, man. I think we've I'll missed that chance too. We should have done that while we were all single. <laughs> and it's going to be tricky now. <laughs> no one's going to be interested take- in us anymore. <laughs> I'll take one for the team. Jesus. <laughs> hey, I'm happy to sell out and- if that has to go on the table, we'll we'll see. <laughs> mm. Yeah, sure. Our dicks are no longer known as the sewer of the <laughs> podcast world. <laughs> <laughs> I got no jokes. I got no goofs to follow that up on. But I, I just I feel that there are some there, and they're just they're just out of reach, or maybe they're just too obvious. Mm. Ah, so Dan, you finally finished The Witcher. I have. I well, I say finally. It's been out for like a week. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I it it only took me two days, but just by last episode i'd only binged mm. half of it and uh then the day after i binged the rest uh yep. fuck this is great yeah i mean where do we Good. begin i will say this a bit. it uh it took me a little while to realize that there were multiple timelines happening oh sure yeah i, I got a bit confused with those timelines at some stages as I well i did too and then i at a certain point i was like look if if they wanted this to make total sense to me they would make it make sense, so I'll just accept the fact that I don't know how these are related. (laughs) And even in the last episode of this first series, I was even thinking, holy shit, Yennefer is old. Like, her stuff must happen way before any of this. Yeah, they age slowly. Like, the Mm. witches as well. Witches as well, yeah. Mm. But yeah, it's just, yeah, just, that that made it a little difficult sometimes working out, because- Sometimes I'll be watching and I'm thinking, and then it's not till like half, like the end of the show. Where, oh no, that was back then. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there was no like present day or. I see, I've read the books twenty so years I ago. Kind of new. Yeah, I, guess, I think I so. Think it's hard for me to really it. say. I, I want to read the books now. Think it was. It, it was easier when Yennefer was um deformed go on. before she changed. Go on, yeah, go on. <laughs> when she was hotter because she didn't know she was hot yet. I actually, I actually do agree with you there. I do think she was hotter before. Definitely. When she was a hunter. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. For starters, she didn't wear as much makeup. It's like this when she, when she became pretty, she also decided, fuck it, I'm going full 80s blue eyeshadow. I think it's also because when she became, well, beautiful, say, she knew it. She knew yeah. she was hot. Yeah. And yeah. I think that, that no, but that's part of arrogance. Of the <laughs> No, 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 I'm, I'm not. See, I'm, confidence I mean that is, confidence she, is fine. She is supposed to be kind of an arrogant shit because she, yeah. she yeah. is literally like magically, you know, perfect. So that's the yeah. kind of mm. part of the Well, thing. at least that black wizard got to fuck her when she was, you know, still all yeah. twisted up and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, uh, I did wonder what the reaction would be to a, you know- <laughs> Perfectly attractive woman playing a disabled person in this day and age, uh, and generally it's been fine. But there was, as I expected, some some backlash about that. You need to cast an actual witch who used to be deformed and then through magic became beautiful. Well, that and the whole premise. Of we are it underrepresented. Is that she's not right, and then they, you know, she has to fix herself, and so people are upset about that. But. Actually, yeah, she that's... doesn't have to. In fact, everyone told her not to, and she went mm. off and fucking did it on her own. So, fuck and then you. and then she also go. Then she regrets it, well, which I think she regrets one. Well, she regrets aspect of it. But part of it. Yeah. So many dudes are like, "Oh, I wish I'd fucked you in the hump." <laughs> well, you still had it. 
Oh, I think I'm going to watch it again. Crooked little jaw. I actually, um, yeah, I really do. I do want to watch it again. A couple of questions mm. for you, Matt, uh, yes. because you've read the books. So bring mm. me up to speed on a couple of things. Um, the Bard, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, Gandalin or Jaskier in this case. Yeah. Is he as anachronistic in the books as he is in this? Don't get me wrong. I find him fucking hilarious. But yeah. he's like a character taken out of Seinfeld and put into Lord of the Rings. <laughs> um, he is funny. I don't know that he was as goofy in my right. mind when I was yeah. reading. But I, so I know what you mean. He just but fucking undermines like- anything. Anytime anyone's like talking like this. And saying yeah. stuff like the prophecy of this, he's like, okay, well, I'm the modern person yeah. here. Because his, yeah, he he plays it very, plays it for comedy, I guess. Mm. Uh, and then, you know, obviously when you read the book, you don't have his voice in your ears. You have to imagine it. Well, I so I, I, I my version was still goofy, but he wasn't pretty, pretty as, normal. okay, you know, as camp, I guess. Now, but, I only uh, played a little bit of the games. Is he in the games? Yes. Yes. And he's not as yep. camp in that either. He he is right. a bit, no. but he's not as. I he's think. also just ends up getting into trouble. Yeah, because he tries and to, you have bang to rescue everybody. him in the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That so CD Projekt Red have actually had gone through and they've um, also updated their agreement with the author of The Witcher. Yes, I saw that this week too. Yeah, mm. he's getting some. Uh, getting now some that more he money. doesn't need it because he's getting royalties from the show. I don't think it's because they're going to be coming out like a new Witcher game, but I think mm. it might have something to do with it. that card game they've still got going. Oh, okay. Gwent. They've still got Gwent. There's Gwent's a game well, they that did, they're still releasing content I mean, they said they're for. still making Witcher stuff, and they do still have the rights to. That's what that was clarified well, by this that, agreement. Yeah. Maybe so. they're trying to consolidate a little bit. Because I know now it's like, oh, okay, we've got the rights to use certain things from the book, but not other things. And this mm. this series is based on the books, but not the games. And maybe maybe they're trying to create a bit of a universe. Yeah. Mm. Well, they've got Cyberpunk coming out too, so that's like an original thing, which will be good for them. Mm. Um, Man, that they won't. Which is also going to be a bit different to what The Witcher was. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Same sort of size and scope, but I, I must admit, guys, I want to go back to The Witcher game now. Mm. Well, mm. uh, that seems quite common um, because mm-hmm. Witcher Three broke, or the uh, the uh, what do you call that? Uh, consecutive players, uh, most consecutive players at a time. Uh, that record got smashed oh, after the TV by show the came Witcher. out. Wow! Yeah, that's a enough people watched the show uh, so- that uh, people were buying the game and then going back to the game and yeah. Because I still need to go back and play it. Because I finished uh, on, I finished it, but then they also released a game of the year version, which also gave me I can get all the achievements again. Yeah. So I need to go play that. Oh, it's a big game. I'm just gonna throw it on easy though. Even so. Oh What's yeah, it's still huge. Yeah, it's not the fights that take the time. It's just everything. It's just a huge game. Just fucking excellent game though. Have you, you've not played you know it, Dan? Funny. Yeah. Which which one? Any of the three. Witches. I I played a little bit of two. And okay. uh, it, it was giving me a headache, and then I purchased three and actually never played it. Oh, so okay, play three. Mm. Play three is because one, it's a good game, but mm. it's one's really very good. in depth. Yeah, um, two was quite good as well, but three I think is where they really found their stride. Yeah, one. Well, look, I've got the three first, sitting there ready to go. The the first Witcher game, and I know I've said this before. I'm sure I have. On, on the podcast, but it's the first game where I couldn't just choose all of the dialogue options because things that mm. you do have a direct effect in the game world that is permanent, you know, like, and that wasn't really a thing mm. back when it came out. Uh, Cause there's, a, when you get to the first village, there's a dwarf there and he's the blacksmith. And it, oh, yeah. when you're talking to him, one of the options is to say something a bit racist. Huh. Uh, and you know, normally okay. in games you, would, I, I would, I was one of those people I would, Start a conversation, go through all of the options because I have to I have to yeah, do yeah, everything. Yeah. But as yeah, soon as you say yeah. that to him, he goes "fuck off, cunt," and he won't talk to you ever again. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't have a blacksmith anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's what I quite like about it. Like, yeah, there are consequences. Mm. Yeah, first uh, first time I experienced that in a game where mm. I say, "Oh shit," yeah, I actually have to think about what I want to do and say because it will have permanent effects. Yeah, because a lot of time back then, but yeah, you could go through. 
go through all the yeah, dialogue everything. and then you can go back and just go, oh, I'll, I'll really go with this one. Yeah. I'll just have a chat one really more time. Even like Knights of the Old Republic, you, know, you could be good or bad, but it's like, yeah, you really just do anything. Yeah. Didn't matter that much. But yeah, in Witcher, nah. You choo- make a Witcher, choice the and you're fucking stuck also, with that choice. Also makes me want to play Skyrim again. Just, oh, yeah. just because of the aesthetic of it. Mm. Mm. I Not started, a great game. I started playing a game that I know that you both recommended I, tra- I check out at some point. Um, Sensua's Sacrifice, Hellblade. Oh, yeah. Ah, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Man, that game is beautiful. Yeah. Uh, d- like, really? Is. Yeah. I can't play a lot of it at a time. It's not a game yeah, that I'm yeah. like the, the the gameplay. I find very, I don't know, draining, personally. Mm-hmm. But but I I will keep going back to it because man, what a world! I believe yeah. there's a sequel coming. There is. It's coming out on the Xbox One X. Mm. Uh, no, the Xbox, the next Xbox, whatever it is. Yeah. See, I love everything about it except probably the gameplay itself. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> but I will, I um, do want to keep going because I the world and the, the lore and just the art and just everything about are it. Are you ex- playing it with headphones? Yes. Ah, uh, good. Mm. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm loving it except the, the fighting is like, yeah. So, yeah. I, yeah, I, I it's sort agree. of yeah. weird because uh, the fighting's not a big part of it. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll keep. It's mostly battling with your inner demons. Yeah. <laughs> It's more of a. I find it more of a puzzle game than an actual fighting game for the most part. There is fighting in it, mm. but if you can get past that, and then you just listen to the dialogue, it's yeah, yeah. Well, it's continue with it. Oh, I, I, don't worry, I will. It's uh, it's great. But yeah, it is a beautiful game. Yeah, and the the, the lore and the story is fucking awesome. Been uh, playing. I tried a few games actually because I finished the Outer Worlds, and I kind of got. Uh, You're in that little. In between area. Yeah, I haven't really settled into a new game. You know what I mean? I've been mm. trying out a few things. I tried to get back into Metro 2033, and I don't think that game is for <laughs> me. I have tried playing that game so many times, and mm. I, I don't- Because like, people rave about it, and I just can't get into no, it. I don't think it's good, I'll be honest. I haven't tried Mex- Metro Exodus, which I do have because of Game Pass. I've been trying the first one because mm. I'm funny, and I have to try and start at the beginning. Because I know there are two games- before Exodus, yeah, uh, but maybe I should just jump ahead. Maybe they, maybe maybe I should do the same because yeah, I've played the first one of the sort of first probably quarter of it a mm. few times, and because it's on Game Pass, but it's also on Xbox and it's also on PC. So for the achievements, I'm doubling up. But I don't know. Yeah, it's just I don't know. It's something about that game. Yeah, I don't think that it's for me. Doesn't work for me. Yeah. But maybe Exodus is better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it got very good reviews, so mm. maybe I'll give it a shot. But yeah, Blade Runner actually, uh, I was playing a bunch yesterday. So yeah, I really want to make some time to to play all the way through that. Once you figure out what the hint key is, <laughs> telling it's there. So who went and saw Knives Out? I did actually. Oh yeah, because I had to know, right? Yeah, because I'm know. a I'm a big fan of. Ryan Johnson's first movie, Brick, right, mm. which is like mm-hmm. a detective thriller, and uh, and then I haven't liked anything he's done since, including ninety yep. percent of his fucking Star Wars abortion. Yeah, <laughs> but I thought this is another mystery. I'll go and see it. Um, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it's all right. Here's the hmm. thing: Ryan Johnson knows how to make a movie. <laughs> but should he? You know? I don't think he should. I don't think he should I think either. he's had more misses than hits. And I'll be honest, as a movie, this is quite fine. And I love this genre. I love this kind of murder house genre. And there's even a line mm. in it where the cop says, this guy basically lives on a Cluedo board. You know, like, <laughs> it's, 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 it wears its references on its sleeve. Mm, um, yep. But the I'm not going to give anything away. But I picked the I picked the killer and the method very, very early on in the film and then was anxious for about two thirds of the film, just hoping I wasn't right about it. You know? <laughs> sure. Um and then when they announced it, I was like, but there's gonna be a twist. That was the obvious thing, and they're gonna do it. No, no. Okay, it's exactly what I thought. So I, mm-hmm. I don't really rate it as a as a murder mystery, but 
you know, there's some. It's fine. Yeah, like it's fine. Did you get the feeling that I did that a lot was cut? Um, yeah, I know what you mean. And uh, for me, it's because a really good murder mystery lets you believe for a certain time that the that red herrings is. they're throwing to you are the correct answers, mm. and then they drop something in that spoils that. Whereas this. Everyone was just throwing their red herrings around and then Daniel Craig was like, well, it ain't none of them. There was also like a couple of characters that were in it, but then I forgot that they were even there because <laughs> yeah. they didn't come back for yeah, most of it. Yeah, it was true. like the, the I forget who she played, uh, the Ricky, Ricky, the one that's in Garfunkel and Oates. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was she's odd. in it. Is she an not. actress other than Garfunkel and Oates? Because I've literally only seen her on YouTube singing dirty songs. <laughs> no, no, she, 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 she does a bit of acting. Yes, okay, yeah, that's what her resume says: dirty, dirty songs, brackets, <laughs> and a bit of acting. But, but I just found it weird because her, she was in it, but then she was her character just sort of disappears, yeah, and then comes back, and and that's why I feel that stuff was cut. <laughs> My favourite line, though, is when Daniel Craig said, um, this is out of context, so it won't mean anything, but when he says, in the bathroom where the Nazi boy was masturbating, like, I laughed <laughs> out loud in the cinema and people were looking yep. at me like, I don't think that was meant to be as funny as you as you have received it as. <laughs> well, it's story I laughed. Of our lives. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so, yeah, Matt, um, my advice to you and to listeners is if this is on Netflix, and you've watched everything else, sure, put it on. It's not bad. Yeah. It's not going to insult your yeah. intelligence in the way that uh, The Last Jedi did. <laughs> but uh, actually, I wouldn't go out of your way to see it. Yeah, don't right. run out to the movies to see this. And you no. know what, Luke? But still I'll watch it. I, I only had a, a small window of time yesterday where I could watch this, and uh, so I ended up going and seeing it in gold class. Because uh, mm. that was the only one that had the, the, the good time slot for me. And I really yep. resent paying $18 for it. If I'd paid <laughs> nine bucks for it, I would have been like, okay, fine, nine bucks. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Like, it, it's, it's, I'm not saying like, don't pay money to see this, but don't pay a lot of money to see this. <laughs> Again, that's the poster. It's <laughs> <laughs> not the review he was looking for with, for this, I don't think. But. Hey. That's a lot better than most of the reviews we've given him. Mm, that's true. Yeah. What was he thinking, though? He must have just been like, I need to do something now that no one can say it's bad. So I'm just going to do it mm. so stock standard that everyone just goes, yep, it's fine. Sure. Why not? Yep. Just, just do, yeah, not take any risks. Yeah. Just don't subvert movie. anyone's expectations. The most paint by <laughs> yep. numbers movie you could imagine. Yep. That's not, that's not a silly thing to do. That's, that's no. his thing now. Uh, that's, <laughs> well, he did subvert well, your expectations, and, didn't he? Because you thought he was yeah. going to subvert your expectations and he didn't. Yeah. You thought it was going to be complete th- shit and it was just okay. Well, we'll wait and see when he gets his Star Wars trilogy. It's not going to happen. I don't think anyone's well, going to Star Wars the next distri- then They are talking the next Star Wars trilogy, though. They're already talking about it. And uh, sources, yeah, there will be a trilogy no matter what sources they Sources on the inside say the next trilogy is going to be set in the High Republic era. fuck does that mean? Um, well, it's not, it's, this is, they're actually doing something smart. They're not doing something that's around the trilogy we know. They're not even looking at, like, the Old Republic. They're doing something which is, like, 4,000 years okay. before New Hope. They're doing, this is about 400 years before. All right. So mm. it's probably going to be... More about the probably the Republic when it was at its height type of thing. Or it's, it's going to be about Yoda when he was in college. <laughs> oh, God, please don't put Yoda in there. I, I guarantee you, Yoda. He's oh. the only character old enough to be in this from the original I forgot trilogy. about he him. Definitely be in this. The best thing to do is just yeah, have something with none of the original characters. Yeah, yeah. not going to happen. Like what they want to do with Mandalorian Season 2, bring in some... Mm-hmm. Just, Trilogy characters, because everyone's everyone's crying out for them. No one is. No one is. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know. I I think that they're at the they're in the position where not enough people who watched and enjoyed uh, the Mandalorian actually know where it fits into 
the canon. That's yeah, that's um, true. Mm. I still think a lot of people literally think baby Yoda is Yoda, Yoda when he was a child. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are waiting for it to be revealed that the Mandalorian was Boba Fett all along. <laughs> both well, both of whom don't cater dead. to those people. <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> But I actually saw an article where they were talking about how you know, fans are, are wanting original characters to come back and here's who they want. And I'm, no, <laughs> the Mandalorian worked so well because it was its own back. thing. You don't need them. You can make new <laughs> characters. People have done that before. I mean, this is going to shock everybody mm. in Hollywood, I'm sure. But at, at once upon a time in a galaxy far, far away, <laughs> <laughs> Luke Skywalker didn't even exist yet. And Darth Vader didn't. Yeah, they were you mean he wasn't characters. an established property? Yeah. Boba Fett, once upon a time, didn't exist. True. Luke, can I, George uh, Lucas can I talk- made him up. He made him up. Very, <laughs> very, very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and no one knew. But it was an independent film. In fact, the studios didn't want it and he had to make it himself. <laughs> yeah. So maybe that's the trick. He, to- he mm. even self-financed uh, Empire Strikes Back. Yes, I didn't know that. Yeah, he did. Yeah, I don't. Know. By the time, what? by the time uh, the prequels came around, I'm pr- I'm pretty sure it was uh, corporate. But basically, he was just literally using his own money for those those yeah. early sequels. Because I think Empire almost bankrupted him, right? Because it went so yeah. over budget. But then it was huge, so it was fine. Mm. But mm. yeah. Oh, I, I, I got a shot. I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, oh. I watched a movie today, in fact, right? Mm. Mm. A movie that is both a very concise encapsulation of middle America in the 1970s and also a very accurate indictment of the entertainment industry and the Hollywood machine. Mm. And that is the Muppet movie from 1979. (laughs) (laughs) Which I haven't seen since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is incredibly smart. It is very funny, and uh, I-, I was shocked at how kind of transcendent the humour was. Because I used to love this movie as a kid, and I it's fucking the one where love they're riding it now. Bikes in the park. Yeah, and here's the thing: okay. because the the reason that they made this movie, or the, the gimmick of the movie, was you'll get to see their legs. Because in the show, you never saw <laughs> yeah. their legs, right? So yeah. not only did they just go out of their way to show their legs, but it's actually <laughs> the plot of the movie. The antagonist is a guy who runs a frog legs restaurant chain that wants <laughs> Kermit, Kermit to be his spokesman. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's all about their legs doing stuff like riding I'm bikes. i watch it. Yeah, because literally really all I remember good. about it is I, I think- no, I couldn't have seen this at the movies. Oh, maybe on a re-release. I saw maybe you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's highly yeah. possible mm-hmm. that you did back then. Uh, I do recall seeing it at the movies, but I might have. It might be a false memory. But uh, mostly, what I remember is them riding bikes. So and, and yeah, that's that's about all I remember. So yeah, but no, there's great stuff. At one point, they're like, "Oh, look, a hitchhiker. Let's let's pick her up." They stop, and it's uh, it's Big Bird, and uh, <laughs> and they're like, "We're going to Hollywood to become." Rich and famous, and he's like, "Oh, I'm going to New York City to try to break into um, public broadcast television." Like, <laughs> it's just so meta. <laughs> wow, is that on Disney Plus? Maybe. Uh, sure. Does uh, Disney own Muppets? They do, don't they? Uh, Disney tried to buy Muppets <clears throat> in the mid '90s, and the deal th- fell through when um, Henson passed away, and they bought oh. some, but not all of the content uh, in the 2000s. So okay. it may very well be if that was part of the package that they bought. Mm. Well, even that's no guarantee because apparently we talked the other week about how now that Mandalorian's finished with the season, uh, there's not a lot of stuff. Uh, people are cancelling Disney Plus just because mm-hmm. that's all they had yeah. it for. Uh, well, now a bunch of films, including a bu- you know some popular ones uh, like Home Alone, for example, mm. mm-hmm. uh, have been removed from Disney Plus as well, quietly. just. Just taking a bunch of movies off, and people. There's no such thing as quietly anymore. The internet will notice. Mm. Well, people were like, "Disney, don't you own these fucking movies that you made? Put them back on there." <laughs> but uh, apparently, licensing deals have caused issues. 
Well, I watched Home Alone at Christmas uh, on Netflix. So right, there's even talk of um probably in the future um Star Wars may go onto other things as well. And what's the fucking point of Disney Plus? Honestly, because I, I I don't know. I think they missed the mark with Disney Plus. I think there's not enough on there for everyone. I'm not sure they're trying to get everyone. And I know that's controversial, but I I I think that I think it's just this push towards digital platforms. Mm. And I I think in a couple of years there literally won't be television. It won't exist. No. And but, uh so this will be it. But it, like if I buy Disney if I'm subscribing to Disney Plus, my assumption is, I mean, and obviously this is wrong, so time to reevaluate. But my <laughs> assumption is that Disney Plus is going to have all the Disney stuff on it, but it doesn't. It's just, it's like I random. I don't think it only has said- Disney stuff, but not all of the Disney stuff. E- it's like it's weird. Yeah, but you're forgetting that. No, no. The key is, it's the only place you can get any Disney stuff. No, but it's not. Isn't that the point? I mean, like- not yet. Because they're waiting for they're waiting for everything to. Click over, but eventually that well, will be the well, case. But, but when that happens, that means they can stop removing stuff from it, right? It'll just have them or not. Because I s- well, that's the thing. Like they shouldn't be removing stuff because that means that they've got their license back and then they've sent it out again. Actually, this which is- makes no okay, sense. So Home Alone and Home Alone Two mm-hmm. were Fox films, right? Which Disney owns yeah. Fox, um, mm-hmm. and they got pulled off the service. So. And and they haven't, as far as I can tell, explained why. But I assume it's some kind of d- like deal with some other company. And like, why would you take a movie off? Some licensing thing to. somewhere. That's a, the, yeah. You're not taking it off unless you're getting money for it somewhere else. Mm. But I just checked the Muppets are on there for you. Okay. Well, Disney uh, Plus Australia is different, so I have to I have to check. And here's yes. why. And I didn't know this until very recently when I was corrected. So we always talk about Disney buying Fox. Disney didn't buy Fox. Mm-hmm. Disney bought Fox content in bulk. Disney can't trade with the Fox uh, logo, right? No. Oh, okay. So they, they have to rebrand everything from Fox as Disney. And there are some oh. territories where that can't happen. And one of those territories is Australia oh. because Rupert mm. is Australian and- he wants Foxtel to continue as it is. So yep. in Australia, Disney Plus may never have all of the Fox content on. Well, it's, so okay, it's more so because is it in America? It's a lot of the, the content is on Hulu as well. That's why you've got mm-hmm. the Disney Plus and Hulu package type of thing. Yep, Hulu's got lots of stuff. Whereas that's why I'm yeah, not we don't cancel have my Disney Plus because there's no much point because it only costs me like three dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you get Hulu Whereas and Disney Plus he- together. Yeah. Huh. But here we only get Disney Plus, and like I've watched The Mandalorian, and there's nothing really else on here that I really want to watch at this time. So there's no point in me giving them the ten dollars a month. Yeah, I- I'll sign up again once they bring Mandalorian season two or whatever's <laughs> next for your week trial series. Because yeah, I don't know for, for in Australia, this it seems they've got like all the Marvel stuff, but then everything else is really it's Disney, it's kids. Yeah. yeah, but maybe that's maybe that's the point that we're missing here. That uh, this is supposed to be just something that the kids can get, or you know, something that a family <laughs> got- can get because ten dollars yeah. a month is still cheaper than getting Disney Channel and buying the DVDs for the movies when they come out because they don't exist anymore. Yeah. Mm. Stuff doesn't we'll go into the Disney Vault anymore. Whatever the fuck that means. Yeah. Unless they still plan to do that. Unless Disney is saying, this is the only place you well, can watch them, was, but you can't that watch them all the time. Well, right? Yeah. That's just marketing. Well, if they do, because if they do do that, and then it'll be, if they're, because then that's how you get people to come back and sign up again. Like, hey, we're releasing this again. People go sign up, then they forget about yeah. it. They sign up for six months. Did you guys see the trailer for the Mulan live action movie? Yeah, I did. Yeah. It looks quite good, yeah, to be honest. Yeah, it looks excellent, doesn't it? And I'm not sure, but I'm really hoping that it's not a musical. 
because if it's just a, a <laughs> movie of, that. of the story of uh, of Mulan, I think it could be really good, and it looks like it's done really well. Yeah. I just hope that they don't burst into song because I honestly I've had enough of that. <laughs> I'd be surprised though if they didn't. Mm. Does it? Because I've never, I've actually never seen Mulan, the, the cartoon. Sure, that, isn't there a little dragon thing? There is. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, there are songs, and there is a little dragon okay. played by uh, Eddie Murphy. Yep. Oh, okay. Filthy I don't dragon, think, huh? I don't think the dragon or Eddie Murphy are in this. They certainly weren't in the trailer. <laughs> I would love it if Eddie Murphy just showed up in a film that's set in fucking Imperial China. Well, look, I mean, <laughs> there are a mixture of Asian American and just plain Asian accents in this already. But um, mm. even even in the old one, fucking Eddie Murphy's jive talk stood out like a sore thumb. <laughs> Uh, his character from Coming to America would be great. <laughs> Does he have any other characters? That's the, that's my favourite of his characters. <laughs> um, they're doing a sequel to that, aren't they? They are. They absolutely are. Yeah. I have about as much interest in the Coming to America sequel as I have in the Bad Boys sequel. Oh, yeah, that's they're a thing. Making another Bad Boys sequel? Yeah. Are you just listing films with black people in them, Dan? <laughs> 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 you guys seen oh. the Shaft remake? <laughs> I saw the Samuel L. Jackson one at the movies when I was yeah. a teenager. He it was is in the reboot. Because it's him and his son, isn't is it? Is that what it is? All I know is they're rebooting it, but it has the same fucking actor. <laughs> yeah, I think it's him and then, yeah, he's, his son is in it and that's the story. Got it. John Shaft Jr. <laughs> so it's kind of like the rise of Skywalker, where it's just pretty it's much. His yeah. name is John Shaft. That's fucking funny. I, I <laughs> you know, we just call everybody John everything. Yeah, That's, John oh, Halo. That's true. Yeah, this does not have good reviews. I mean, not that that means anything, but oh, Usher, Usher is Usher. in this. Who? Who's Usher again? Usher is looks like Usher is his son. Why? Oh, okay, right. I thought you were just like. A bit of trivia, like, guys, Usher, you know, our favourite yeah. musician. <laughs> Maybe I'll watch this after all. Guys, Usher, <laughs> give it a chance. I don't know if I've ever seen Usher act in a thing. No, I don't know that I have either. Well, you can find out just after this and give us a review next week. Mm, probably won't. Tell you what, nah. listen to some of Usher's music between now and next week and review that. <laughs> God. Does he? What, what's a song of his I would know? Usher. I don't know uh, any Usher That songs. one that goes- dun, No. Dun, 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 oh, no, sure. I, you know that one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can't sing uh, it. I can hear how it goes, but I, uh-huh. I'm really bad with lyrics. I don't listen to lyrics. And people often go, oh, you know that song that goes- nah, nah, nah. I'm like, no, sing. You have to do the melody, otherwise I'm not going to know. <laughs> like, I don't listen to the lyrics at all. <laughs> yeah, not interested. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. It's less common than I would have expected, I think, just because well, it's something just- that I always do. I always assume <laughs> everyone else must as well, but not. I'll go, oh, you know, and they're like, no, how do the words go? I'm like, fuck, I don't know. I think it's 50-50, and my, um, my okay. metric for that is when I used to work at a record store, and uh, I, I just as many people yeah. would come in and hum me a tune and say, do you have this album, as would come in and say, <laughs> um, do you have – an album with a song that mentions a placenta. And I'd be like, you're thinking of Lightning <laughs> Crashes by Live, the album is Throwing Copper, Rock and Pop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Does the placenta fall to the floor? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, there we go. Is there one about a placenta floating to the ceiling? <laughs> well, that's the uh, that's Dead's album. <laughs> yeah. Can I just say, I actually really like Live, and um, it is yeah, that's possible- good it is absolutely, yeah, it's not only it's their best, it's one of the best rock albums in the 90s, if I may say so. Mm. Um, almost impossible to Google them because if, yeah, you just, fair. if you just die, okay, I want to see the music videos, live music videos. No, not yeah, Beyonce yeah. live, okay? No. Right? Yeah. Google live. No, no, not this stuff. I want a live band. Oh, not yeah. this stuff. Yeah, live. not a live, <laughs> live band. Not a band yeah. live. The band live. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because that that was quotes. all before the yes. internet. <laughs> so, live, man. yeah, 
Yeah. I mean, I was listening to them the other day while fucking half my country was on fire and I was just thinking, I wish I could <laughs> Google this. Yeah. I'm really in a shitty position right now. <laughs> Someone should do something about this. <laughs> Scott Morrison should do something about this. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Morrison should forcibly shake their hands. <laughs> Scott Morrison should forcibly shake my dick. A.K.A. the sewer of Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> That's all for this week. Thank you for listening and we hope you enjoyed the show. If you enjoyed it, then please subscribe and iTunes to receive episodes automatically. We'll see you next time. <laughs>